Hi everybody, welcome to module 21, our publishing options, the costs involved and the timeframes for publishing. So this module is just going to be a little bit of an overview of the steps involved uh, in producing your book and later modules we're going to go into more detail on each of the topics that we're going to look at. So before we get into that though, I know Andrew's already mentioned this to you, but uh, we're going to have just a quick look at some of the authors that we've worked with and the success that they've had with their book, just to rem as a reminder of the sorts of things that can happen when you publish a book for your business. So first we're going to look at Bushy Martin and some of the coverage he received when his book came out. So you can see he often gets uh, interviewed about tax policy around election time. So you can see there another one all sorts of interviews, podcasts, blogs, that sort of thing. And the big one for Bushy, he got onto 60 Minutes with his book. Uh, and that's all after publishing his book, The Freedom Formula. Now the next one, Pauline Yuen. So this is her second book. Um, she also got all sorts of fantastic coverage. Now this is just a sample of the coverage that these authors have received. So you can see there, Flying Solo, again, all sorts of blogs, podcasts, all sorts of things. And that was after publishing her book, The Way of the Spiritual Entrepreneur. Next one, Craig Wilson, again, blogs, interviews, radio interviews, podcasts. And Craig also had a fantastic TV appearance with his book. And that was after publishing his book, Intuitive. And the last one, Sarah Bartholomew, she's a lawyer who published a book about risk management, but she took a really interesting angle. She published it from the point of view of examining drug kingpins and how they manage their organizations. So real life drug kingpins. And she looked at their organizations from a risk management perspective. So a really different and really clever approach which uh, got her lots of interest. And as you can see there again, another television appearance after publishing her fantastic book, Kingpin. So that's just a little bit of a look at some of the things some of our authors have done with their books after they've come out. So the next thing we're gonna look at is what are the different publishing options? So there's basically three ways you can publish a book. There's traditional publishing, there's self-publishing, and in the middle of the two is hybrid publishing. Now it's definitely a spectrum. There's all sorts of mo uh, different publishing models in between all of those, but these are the three basic ways you can publish a book. So let's have a look at each of these now. Now, traditional publishing is the format that most, most people are familiar with. So the author writes the book, the publisher pays the costs and they share the profits or loss. So this is, uh, this is companies like Penguin, Random House, well, <laughs> the same company these days, Penguin Random House, um, Hardy Grant, Five Mile Press, all sorts of businesses like that. They're traditional publishers. Now, the next model is hybrid publishing. The author writes the book and shares the costs and the profit or loss with the publisher. So obviously, as you can see, halfway in between traditional publishing and self-publishing. Now the third option is self-publishing. This is where the author writes the book, pays all the production costs, and keeps all of the profit or loss for themselves. Now, self-publishing, especially in the last few years, has become a, very much become the preferred option for business and entrepreneurial authors. So why is that? Well, there's lots of different reasons, but we're going to look at just the three main ones now. So the first one is you don't have to worry about being picked up by a publisher. Now, obviously that is a very big hurdle. I used to be managing editor at John Wiley and Sons. I was involved in the publishing process, selecting books that were going to be published and way more manuscripts come in than are ever published. There's just, you have a pile 10 feet high on your desk of manuscripts to look at and you're probably only going to choose one of them to publish. So that's one of the things that you avoid if you self-publish a book. You don't have to get over the first hurdle of getting, public, getting picked up by a publisher. The second reason self-publishing is usually preferred is it's much quicker. So publishing with a traditional publisher can take anywhere from four or five months up to 12, 16, 18 months by the time they uh, pick up the book, sign a contract, put it into their marketing plan and go through the production process. So self-publishing is much, much quicker. Uh, it usually takes about three months start to finish to self-publish a book. And the third reason most entrepreneurial and business authors choose to self-publish these days is that there are no restrictions on how you can use the book when it comes out. 
So if we presume as a business and entrepreneurial author, you're going to self-publish a book, what are the different options for doing so? So there's basically two ways you can do it, and we're going to look at this a lot in the following modules as well. You can DIY, which is where the author finds all of the individual suppliers and manages the process yourself. Or you can work with a self-publishing provider. This is where a single company provides you with all the services you require in one place and manages the whole publishing process for you. So why would you choose to manage the publishing process yourself? The first reason is you want to keep costs down as much as possible. Now, if you're going to manage it yourself, you can hunt around, find the lowest cost provider for each different service you need. So in the long run, it can save you a little bit of money, but usually what you save in money, you lose in the amount of time it takes you to do the extra work. You want to learn about the process so you can manage future books yourself. You have particular people you want to work with. There's a very common reason for doing it yourself. Perhaps your, your brother's an editor or your sister's a cover designer. You have some particular people you want to work with so you'd rather manage the process yourself. And another reason you might want to do it yourself is you have more time to invest than money. Now, who would you need on your DIY team? Now, this is the topic of the next module, so we'll go into that in much more details, detail then. So we're just gonna very quickly look at that here. So you'll need an editor, a proofreader, a cover designer, an interior designer, a printer, ebook service, print-on-demand service, and audiobook. Now, we're just gonna have a quick look at two very common DIY pitfalls to avoid. So this is problems we see happen quite often with people managing the project themselves. Now, the first is not adequately planning your project. Now, obviously that's a problem for any kind of project that you're working on. So what does that mean when you're self-publishing your book? So the problem we see authors have when they don't plan properly is they just plan the project out sequentially in steps rather than planning it out as a whole. Now, you're going to see this one a lot a lot, a lot in this section of the course. So we see this cause all sorts of problems for authors. Again, not the authors we work with. Using suppliers who have little or no experience working on books. Now, the other option we mentioned is using a self-publishing company, which is uh, where you get all the services you need in one place. So why would you choose to do that? Now, the first one's fairly simple. You don't want to manage the process yourself. The second one is you would like to have somebody on call for advice throughout your project. So this is a significant advantage of using a self-publishing company. If you're DIYing it and lining up all the people individually, there's not going to be one person tracking the project all the way through for you who you can call on. So when you work with a self-publishing company, you should usually have a single person who you can talk to at any time throughout your project uh, to get the advice that you need. You want to publish the best quality book that you can. Now, Andrew's talked numerous times about we're not talking about just producing any book. We're talking about publishing a really, really, really good book. And your chances of producing a really, really, really good book definitely increase when you use a self-publishing company. Because again, you'll have one person overseeing the whole process, one person who knows what's going on from start to finish, and they can tie the project together for you and make sure it all goes smoothly. And the final reason why you might choose a self-publishing company, well, there's, there's lots of reasons, the final reason we're going to look at now, is you want to minimize the risk of problems. Now, here's just a few tips to be wary of when you are looking for a company to work with. So in every industry, every industry, unfortunately, there are some shady operators, and that's true in publishing as well. So we're just quickly going to look at a few things to be wary of. These are just a few red flags uh, for working with a publishing company. So beware of companies that make claims about the huge sales you will achieve. So especially working in the area of business and entrepreneurial publishing, success is not about the book sales. As we saw at the beginning, it's all about the exposure that you'll gain from having your book published. So don't fall for claims about huge sales. Um, number one, it's difficult to achieve. And number two, it's not why you're publishing your book anyway. 
Uh, beware of packages where you pay most or all of the production costs of the book, but then share any profits with the company. So this is, we mentioned the hybrid model earlier. There's nothing inherently wrong with the hybrid model, but if you are going to get ripped off, it probably will be with the hybrid model. So what happens is you end up uh, without realizing it, underwriting all of the production costs of the book, and then if it makes a profit, you also end up sharing that with the publishing company. So be very careful of that. Be, be wary of companies that want to claim any rights in your book. Um, you, should, uh, you should retain full rights in the content of your book, no matter what publishing option you choose. Now, there are restrictions, as I mentioned, if you go with a traditional publisher, on how you can use the published book after it's published, because you can't do anything that will compete with the printed version that they've produced, but they shouldn't hold any rights in the content of your book. Beware of companies that don't do any marketing of your book, that, but then take a cut of sales. Beware of companies that say they will market and promote your book overseas at book fairs. So um, number one, you probably don't want that anyway. And number two, they won't really do it. It's what they do is they put the book on a table, your book on a table with 200 other books at an international book fair, and they say they've promoted your book overseas. So let's have a quick look at the seven self-publishing steps. And again, we're going to go through these in more detail in the following modules. Now, these steps will be the same. It doesn't matter whether you're DIYing it or using a self-publishing company. These steps will be the same pretty much no matter how your book is produced. Most businesses or most editors or most designers or whoever you're working with will take you through a similar process. So step one is planning. So that involves budgeting, timeframes, that kind of thing. Editing. Design, so that's the cover and the interior. Proofreading, which is a very, very important part of the process. Printing, ebook, print on demand, and audiobook, and distribution. So, another very common question which you may, may be wondering about is what's the investment required to self publish your book? So the investment for a 35,000 to 40,000 word book, obviously it can vary depending on how you do it and what companies, uh, you know, providers and companies you choose to work with. $7,000 to $9,000 should get you a good level of service and a good quality book. Nine to $12,000 will get you a better level of service and a better quality book. The gold standard for a book for about 35 to 40,000 words, you should be paying about 12 to $15,000. That's for a complete package. So that should include your editing, your design, your printing, uploading your book to Amazon. It should be a complete package. For that amount of money, you should be getting a book that's produced to the same standards as the major publishers, which you absolutely can do these days with self-publishing. So I'm not sure what sort of price range people were expecting, but we find that some people think it's gonna cost them $2,000 and some people think it's gonna cost them $30,000. We're not gonna go into, into too much detail on this here because it's a very involved conversation because every book is a bit different, but hopefully that's given you a little bit of an overview of how much it'll cost to produce your book. Now, another common question obviously is, how long will it take me to publish my book? So you can see here, this is again, a broad overview. It'll be similar pretty much no matter what company you're working with or what editors and designers and that kind of thing. This would be a typical turnaround time to self-publish your book from you completing your writing draft that's ready to go to an editor to you having printed books in your hands. So the first step is editing. So that takes about four to six weeks. Interior design and layout takes about four to six weeks. Cover design also takes about four to six weeks, but this happens alongside the editing and the interior design and layout. So that's not an additional four to six weeks, that happens simultaneously. Then proofreading takes about a week, printing takes about two to three weeks, and ebook print on demand and audiobook uploading, uh, that'll take about four weeks. Again, that happens alongside your printing. So that's not an additional four weeks, that's simultaneous as well. So it should take you about three to four months to self-publish a high quality book. If you want some more information on anything in this video, you can contact us at our website, you can call me, or you can email me at michael at publishcentral.com.au.